this is Brownells Tech Tips. Sound kind of rough right now because I've been sick for the past week. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to talk to you today about a uh, basically it's a, an application to overwrite your current home based router and a lot of the home switches. It's called OpenWRT, and as it states up in the upper left hand corner, wireless freedom. OpenWRT uh, basically will turn a regular home end router into a as close as you're going to get to an enterprise router without actually having an enterprise class router. Um, a lot of them will actually have Lucy, which is the web interface pre installed, so configuration right off the bat will be pretty easy. Some of the images do not have Lucy pre installed, so you will have to SSH into it and then manually install Lucy. There is so much documentation on openwrt.org. I will provide the link in the details. And this is definitely a video for more advanced uh, persons who are wanting to get better performance out of their routers, especially. Uh, if they have any Netgear or Linksys routers and equipment, this is going to be a huge benefit for you. And uh, the, the performance difference for me switching over was actually relatively interesting because my, uh, my, my default switch, which is a different one from the one I'm going to use for this lab, uh, this is a junk switch, this is a lab switch and it's it's going to get uh, taken offline and decommissioned probably right after this video but uh, the this particular setup um, this is on a Linksys uh, E300 or no it's an E3000 and then uh, my primary switch is an EA3500 and the primary switch I went from having uh, 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 170 meg download to the, the full 220 meg download speed through my ISP and my upload went from being limited at 17 meg to full 25 meg upload speed so the, the network response is a whole lot faster and performance is far better than what it was I did have to go in and program in a lot of static uh, IP addresses for various things, especially my uh, servers, but the, the biggest thing is pretty well getting to go in and make all the modifications and stuff and getting it all configured. And once you have it all configured, it works very, very, very well. You can have logging enabled and it doesn't kill the device like uh, logging does with the, the default uh, OEM software that comes on it so definitely a worthwhile upgrade to change your device over to openwrt from whatever the default is and, uh, this can be installed on several d links a lot of net gears almost all of the linksys routers and switches and uh, uh, there's a lot of other devices uh, massive documentation in there and there's a full list on what all devices are supported if you just go digging through the page so once you get it installed and all you got to do on the Linksys devices I, all I had to do was download the bin file and then just like doing a manual update just flash the bin to the device and reboot it um, on all three of my devices that I have it installed all of them the uh, the default resets function for uh, uh, the Linksys devices to force it to a factory restore or factory default settings uh, the, that reset function works and if you goof up real bad you can do a full reset of the device back to default and go in and redo your install and redo your configuration so that is one nice feature that that's still there now once you have it logged in go to your uh, page and you'll have Lucy on there waiting for you so you log in you get to the first page again like I said this is the Linksys E3000 and as you can tell it's the Lucy trunk and Lucy is fully installed and everything set up and going 
so this this first page will give you a lot of the status and everything and if you scroll all the way down it'll give you the status of your uh, wireless networks you can look at the status of the firewall the routes pretty much everything system log kernel log this will give you an idea if there's some serious problems or not system this is where you're going to go whenever you first do the install you'll have to go to system and then go to administration and set a password for the first time and you definitely want to put in a strong password so that you don't have people that can just log in because it automatically starts out at default with no password at all whatsoever and you do not want that because then anybody can go in and configure it however they want to and lock it out where you can no longer go fix the issue so if you click on system this will pretty well give you your direct access to the logging and your general setup you can set the name time zone and everything else set up your NTP client go to administration and like I stated this is where you'll set up the password password for the first time put it in there you'll scroll down to the bottom and hit save as this is where you'll set up your SSH configuration and you can set it where it's unspecified so it can be accessed from all connections WAN or LAN you can designate specifically to the WAN port or the LAN ports what port it runs on and then you can scroll down and put an SSH key the SSH key unfortunately does display on the web page as clear text so you definitely want to be careful about uh, letting other people see it whenever they're around close by and various things like that and then once you get it all set you can scroll down to the very bottom and then just hit save or you can hit save and continue Save just saves the settings, save and continue will take you off that page and back to the main main page and then you can go from there. So if you go to software, that'll specify what all software is installed directly into the system. It'll also give you a good idea how much free space you have left. According to this, free space is 93% at 4.02 megabytes. So I've, I've got a lot of free space left over. You can also click on configuration and this will give you an idea of your base config install. So you can change scheduled tasks where it does various things on a scheduled set. You can reboot from here, you can back up or refresh the firmware when there's updates of OpenWRT. Or you can do the LED configuration. I leave the LED on default. It pretty well knows what to do with each system. Uh, it'll already have all the system information in there, so you can go tweak it and modify it, but I just leave it alone. So then you come to network, and you can go to the Wi-Fi, which this is where you're going to configure the Wi-Fi information. As you can see, here's the... Uh, BSSID. That's pretty much the, the hexadecimal equivalent of the SSID itself and then this one actually has a dual radio output the other one it says that it's not enabled but it actually is I don't know why it does that but it automatically kicks that one out for some reason so it's just probably a hardware issue with that specific card but that's fine I mean that, that particular board or card in that uh, that router's not the strongest thing in the world, and it's not the best one. But you can go in and configure your wireless network. And you can set your channel. This one's on channel 11, so that way it doesn't interfere with the other one. You can set what your power, transmit power is, and I've got it cranked up. Most of them default at a lower power setting than what it's actually capable of transmitting at, so this will actually cause you to extend your range as well. And then of course whenever it connects you have direct to the LAN, you can set it up direct to WAN or root however you want it configured. You can hide the ESSID and then you set your ESSID right here. And you go to wireless security and this is where you will put in your what encryption it uses, the cipher that it uses and then the key for your uh, encryption itself so that'll be your pass key for everybody to be able to connect up to the Wi-Fi and you go to your Mac filter you can turn on Mac filtering right here and you can set it how you want allow list or allow accept all accept 
so you can either whitelist or blacklist whitelisting is always better advanced will give you your distance optimization along with your fragmentation threshold configurations and everything else this stuff you can really fine tune your network your wireless network on if you're not real for sure what to do I would highly recommend leaving that alone don't do anything with it then you have your network interfaces then you have your network interfaces and with the network interfaces you can go in and manually configure the actual ports and stuff on the four port switch uh, you can set what the starting IP for it all is going to be and everything else do not accidentally set it on DHCP with nothing to connect to it because if you do that then you'll never be able to access it because if there's nothing that's connected to it that's supplying a uh, DHCP since most routers are running as the DHCP server then it's automatically not going to give you access to anything you have your DHCP and DNS this is where your actual DHCP stuff is you can do the resolve hosts and stuff TFTP I don't use TFTP at all you have your advanced settings and this is where you can pretty well screw everything up if you don't really know what you're doing now you have the discard uh, RFC 1918 responses 1918 responses are your uh, uh, internal um, basically it's a response from what are referred to as bogons which are public IP addresses that are owned by the organization or individual and if you have various bogons that are coming back and trying to talk back into your system odds are it's probably not legitimate traffic so you can set up a list of bogons that are allowed and then others that you're not using you definitely don't want to be on that list there's there's a lot of control over it and of course you have the the static routes to program in static routes for different things which just to show you I've got a couple of them set up on here like that one right there that's just a static route to one of my systems that's the static route to the main switch which their main router which that's the primary router that's in line and of course I have the gateway information and stuff like that so if there's anything you need to program a static route for, you can put it in very easily right here. Same with the IPv6 if you have a static route on that. Then of course you can go to diagnostics. So from here you can ping various things, do trace route and NS lookup all from right here within the router. So OpenWRT is a really, really good solution for a uh, router setup and making sure that your system is configured properly. Um, probably is going to be the biggest thing uh, definitely want to follow the documentation and make sure that it's all set up correctly and that it's set up to best practices so that way you're not just wide open to everything on the internet uh, especially with like uh, firewall configurations and things like that um, you'll definitely want to do a lot of research again like I said this is more for advanced users who want to get away from the default install <coughs> default install on their routers and uh, some of the switches uh, this is a very worthwhile upgrade to make and especially on a security stance gives you a lot more control over your system this information is out there for absolutely everybody as always watch like and share have yourselves a great day